Hello and welcome back. So in this section, we are discussing the idea of standardizing the inputs and outputs in a regression problem before we compute the estimator. And there are two reasons for doing this. The one is if the data is physical quantities, we need to choose units in which we measure them. For example, if it's, I don't know, body height of people, then you could measure this in feet and inches or in centimeters or in meters, which gives you the same information but expressed in different numbers. And for methods like rich regression, that will actually make a difference because the absolute magnitude of numbers plays a role in the penalty term. And it doesn't really make sense for the resulting estimates to depend on the units we have chosen. So if we can make this go away by standardizing the data, this is a good thing. And then the second aspect is related to that, namely again the penalty term in rich regression that combines all input variables. We have this sum of beta i squared, which we are minimizing. And that makes most sense if the scales of the individual beta i's are comparable to each other. So if one input goes numbers in the hundreds and the other is in the range of 0.1 to 0.2, then the penalty will much stronger affect the term which lives on the scale where the values are large. And again, that is probably not what we want. And after standardizing the values, they are all on the same scale. So the penalty term applies equally to all of them. Good, and that's really it. I'm going, I'm going to show you some more details, but that was already the idea. So let's work out these details. You probably know to standardize a variable means subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation so that afterwards it has mean zero and variance one. And that's exactly what we are going to do here. So if we have our x i one up to x i p and i ranges from one to n and we have also y i, also i ranges from one to n. Then these are the inputs and these are the outputs and we want to standardize them and we just need to think for a second how do we do that. And if you remember what I just said in the introduction, it is clear we need to do that per variable. That's the whole point. We want to make the variables comparable. So we standardize xi1 for every i, then we standardize xi2 for every i and so on up to xip and then the outputs we also standardize separately. So what we do is, let's say we call the standardized ones W, the so Wij is then Xij. And what we do is we subtract the average value, the mean for variable J. In the notes I call that Xj bar, so that is the average of Xij over all i. And then we're doing this with data, so we have to divide by the sample standard deviation and again I divide by the sample standard deviation of variable j. So xj bar is 1 over n sum i from 1 to n x i j for all j. And s x j squared is 1 over n minus 1 sum i from 1 to n x i j minus x j bar squared as usual. So the only important thing here is we do it by column. Then we do the same thing with the response. So, I don't know, let's call it zi. It's then yi minus y bar over sy, sample variance of the y. And then the next step is we do linear regression with these data. So we use the wij, the transformed xij as inputs. We use the zi, which is the transformed yi as outputs. And then we do linear regression as usual. And there is one thing you run into immediately when you try that. Namely, if you try that numerically, you find the estimated intercept is exactly equal to zero. That makes sense because we standardize the response and the variables at that. So everything is centered. So we should really not need an intercept. And the result is it's a theoretical result. If you do it, the intercept is not close to zero, but it's actually equal to zero. I show you proof of that in the notes, but it's not so interesting. So I omit it here. You should read it in the notes. So, 
So that means we fit a model without an intercept, which means the column of ones is gone. So we have w11 up to w1p here, then w21 up to w2p, all the way down up to wn1 up to wnp. And that matrix still has n rows, but now it has only p columns and not p plus 1 columns. Good, and then linear regression, we know how to do that. Let's call the new coefficients gamma hat because we want to transform back in a second, so we are going to use beta hat in a second. So gamma hat is w transpose w plus lambda identity inverse w transpose z, that's the new names, w is the design matrix, that's there because we're doing rich regression, that's there because it's always there in the formula for the estimator, and z is the transformed responses. And then we get our estimator. And the purpose of this was, I already said this, now the variables are all comparable. That means the scale of the gammas will be all comparable because they act on quantities which all live on the same scale. And that means the penalty term, which shows up a bit here, that will act on them all equally, so we are not having some directions where larger variance is allowed and other directions where it's forced to be much smaller. So that in general works better. So if you do rich regression and the variables are of different orders of magnitude, then you should standardize like this first. Good, and the last step to do is to transform that back. So how do we transform that Back. I think we see that most clearly if we look at the model mean. So the model mean is, the responses are z, so z hat. If I take the fitted value for a new input, I get some j from 1 to p. There's no intercept, so I start at 1. Then the coefficients are gamma hat j, our estimated regression coefficients, which are only called gamma because it's for the transformed data. And then I get the new input wj. Maybe let's call it W twiddle just to make clear it's a new input and not one of these data. So we have that. Then this new input was presumably transformed from some given new input in X space. So we do that some J from 1 to P gamma hat J and then the transformed X input is, let's call it X twiddle J minus X J bar over S X j, that's straight from here, and it's important to notice we subtract the same mean we subtracted here and the same, we use the same standard deviation we used here. So if x twiddle is new data where we want to compute the fitted value, these quantities, average and standard deviation, they are not affected by x twiddle. x twiddle does not go into computing these values. We use the ones which we used for setting up the design matrix. We need to do that because we need to transform it into the space we actually used for our regression analysis. So we need definitely to use the old values. So we have that. And then we can take that apart. So I want to take out all the inputs separately. So we have gamma hat 1, 1 over s x 1, x twiddle 1. That's one of the terms I have. Then I have gamma hat 2, 1 over s x 2, x twiddle 2. And that goes all the way up to the last one. So gamma hat p, 1 over s x p, x twiddle p. And then I have ignored so far everything to do with the average of the input data. So here we have also minus some j from 1 to p, gamma hat j xj bar over s xj. So I'm writing it in this funny way because that is going to be the regression coefficients transformed back into the original coordinates, whereas this quantity here is going to be the intercept. That looks like it depends on x, but that is only the average of the input data. Maybe you could call it training data. Whereas the actual input is this and that and that. So only these have the regression coefficients in front, and that we need to treat as a constant, that's the intercept. And there is one more step, namely we need to transform the output. So let's write that here. So 
z hat is y hat minus y bar over sy. And again, these two must be the same we used to transform the original data, whereas this y hat is the fitted value for our new input. And you see what happens. So the sy is multiplied over. So we have sy here, sy here, sy here, and sy here. So I've multiplied that over and then I need to add the y bar over so we get a y bar here. And that's finally the result. So we get this is beta hat zero. And then we have y hat is beta hat zero plus that we call beta hat one. Then we have beta hat one x to the one. And this we call beta hat p. So that's beta hat p x to the p. So that is a success. We have managed to transform back the regression solution into the original coordinate space. So that's written in terms of x inputs and y outputs rather than w's and z's. And here we have a rule how to transform the regression estimates we got on the transformed data into regression estimates for the original data. And you see it's just a factor. It's as the, the ratio of the standard deviations of the outputs and the corresponding input variable. And for the transformed data, we said we have no intercept, but for the original data, we have an intercept. And you see that obviously depends on the means because the means were what made it so that there was no intercept in the transformed data. And here's the formula to get the intercept in the original coordinate system. Good, and that's really all there is to it. So if you do rich regression, the variables live on different scales. You should do this transformation before you apply rich regression, and then you should transform back the data like that. Okay, so this was standardization of variables in regression problems, and that's also the end of this section. So what we've learned here was a new method for computing regression the estimates for the regression coefficients and this is different from the least squares estimator we had before and we've seen sometimes the least squares estimator is more advantageous and sometimes the rich regression estimator is more advantageous and it depends on the problem in question and on the amount of collinearity present for example which one we should use and to go with this towards the end of the module module we will learn a third way of computing regression estimates and that one then will be good in the presence of outliers but let's not worry about this for now but instead let's finish this video and i'll see you again in a few days bye bye